In London's inner city, a psychiatric team is trying to treat patients in the community. Over the past 12 months, the team and patients have allowed unique access to the normally closed world of psychiatric care. This is John's story. A former psychiatric patient is living alone in his own home, in his own world. He's about to be forced back into hospital, although he doesn't know it yet. Well, um, my name is my name is John Baptist. John Baptist. Um, I was. Um, it's, it's a new name I have now. My my, my old name was Philip Addo. Um, I was born in Ghana um, in 1963. Hi, it's from the GTISW at Wandsworth. I'm just wondering if the ambulance is on its way. I've rang up earlier. I was booked for around 12. Thanks. Thank you. I was born with a twin sister. I was born um, white, yeah, with, um, with my sister. We had, um, we had blue hair. That was the strange thing about it. We had blue hair. And um, the thing was, my, my, my sister was... They, 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 they killed her. Hello, can I have a control room, please? If I, um, if I may, if I may put it a bit, uh, this way, um, if there was, if there was a monarchy in Russia at the moment, I would, I would be the, um, the successor to the Tsar. It's a guy who's on, he's going to hospital under section two. He's a Ghanaian chap who lives on his own. Yep. We haven't told him he's going to hospital under section two, um, but we've gone in and talked to him this morning. He doesn't think he's ill. He's not going to hospital. So we said, thank you for talking okay. to us. We'll see you later. How do you later. propose to get him to the hospital? Well, the ambulance is on its way. Okay, well, if we wait for the ambulance, think, yeah, there's no please. point in speaking to him. If he's going to be He'll just be upset and angry, I think. Yeah. But he has actually been detained before, so probably he knows the score. I usually sometimes you might say somebody you tend to get frustrated and all that, but I just keep on and um, just praying that I would get in, my, um, get in touch with my auntie that she would reply to the letters I've sent to her. Your auntie is yeah, uh, that's the queen. John Baptist, who rejects his former name Philip Addo, denies that he's mentally ill. He won't accept the treatment that his GP and a psychiatrist believe he needs but nobody can be compulsorily admitted to hospital under Section 2 of the Mental Health Act, or sectioned, without the agreement of a social worker as well. I mean, he's been seen on three occasions by social workers, twice by my colleague, once by myself, and the guy doesn't think he's mentally ill. He has no intention of taking treatment. And we, we can't just leave him. We can leave him to deteriorate. Do we, do we really want that? We know for a fact that he will deteriorate. On previous occasions, when he's deteriorated, he's stopped eating and drinking. He's not prepared to see his family anymore, so they're not going to be able to check on him. John's unhappy with the treatment he's had in the past and is trying to take legal action against Springfield Hospital, where he's about to be taken. Yeah, and um, I'm having the legal aid scheme. Do, Do you mind filming your Yeah, then I'm You don't mind, it. OK. Hey, look, can you can you just listen to me for a second? All right, these two forms. All right, that's an. I'm not Philip anymore. My yeah. name is John Baptist. Yes. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. These two forms. Yeah. That that's a recommendation from a doctor. Who is the doctor? Uh, it's, it's Dr. Burns, the one I yeah. told you about this morning. He's not my doctor. Right. And Dr. Blonstein. And Blonstein is not my doctor anymore. Listen, 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 listen. Can you just okay. listen to me? You've had your say. Yeah. You okay. just listen to what my colleague has these to say. These two doctors. Then. Yeah think that the best place for you to spend some time is a hospital, all right? Now, when it comes down to it, I'm not a doctor, but I have to, as a police officer, be guided by the doctor's opinion, all right? And they think that the best place for you to go is into the hospital, all right? Now, I'm saying that to you as a police officer, yeah? Yeah, you're saying that to me as a police officer, yes? Yeah. But I'm saying, listen, there's a court case come up, yeah, right. coming up, which they, listen, listen, mm -hmm. which they've been asked to send files from the hospital concerning okay. me. Now, listen, you have no right to take a person into hospital, what? like, when you know he's bringing a court case against there. you. Wait, 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 wait. 
Wait, I would have. I, I, um, I want my. I want. I want. I want a lawyer. Okay, right. to deal with this. I'm not going into that okay. hospital. Listen, I'm not going to that hospital to be injected again and made made unconscious right. and all, and all sort of things. Right. Don't Philip, you? Philip, they won't do that. I promise. Listen, you, they listen, will not listen. You, listen, you listen, listen. I'm not listening to you on, on that promise. You okay. are listening You're because going to wait, under wait, two, wait. Into health whatever, health. whatever section you call in, okay. I'm, I'm having my solicitor deal with it. Okay. And until my listen, listen. As soon as you get there, you can bring your solicitor. Listen, my solicitor and my doctor, all the I've got in touch. With, I'm going to have to deal with it, and Absolutely. then you have the right no. to yeah. take me there. No, you're not, not going. No, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 wait, wait. Listen, listen. listen. To, no, you've, no, you've been saying a lot, and now you've got to listen to us for a while, right? You've got to go. We appreciate for what you've said. Listen, this listen. This lady said there's nothing going to happen. Listen, listen. No, 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 no. I'm not going to be injected anymore. Listen, listen. If you can get dressed, please. Be nearer to God. Mm. It'll be safer to close the window, John, yeah. if somebody breaks in. You don't have your. You know, You'll get broken into if you don't shut the window. I should shut it. Shall I shut it for you? No, I'll leave it alone. Alright. Okay. Where's your key? Is it open any further than that? Is it locked now? Just leave it alone. Alright. Yeah, do you want to come through and shut excuse it? Excuse me. No, John, it's not a case of excuse me. You're coming out and you're pulling you're the door behind you. You're thinking of threats. Excuse me. No, I'm not threatening. Get out you're of my out. way and let me come out. Come out. If I move to the side. Excuse on. me. Yes. Excuse me. Yeah, fine. Excuse me. Come on, John. John, come on. Listen, I've got to close the door. Let me shut the door and lock me. Come on. That's it. That's it. Well done. Come on. Thank you. Find your fingers. Excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. You know you're out of a job, did you know that? Yes, oh, fair okay. enough, John. Initially, social workers refused to section John because he seemed to be managing well at home. But the consultant psychiatrist in charge of the North Battersea team was keen to start treatment as soon as possible. The social worker's job is really to ensure that other less restrictive alternatives are not being missed. So on the whole, they will tend to err on the side of thinking in terms of the patient's civil rights rather than the severity of their illness. And psychiatrists will tend to err on the side of thinking about the severity of the illness rather than the civil rights. Our Mental Health Act allows us to bring people into hospital if they've got serious mental health problems and we can help them. They don't have to have physical health problems, they don't have to be a danger to someone else. John is one of 23 patients sectioned by the North Battersea team last year from a caseload of around 300. I'm not in this job to keep the streets tidy. I'm in this job because I've seen enough severely suffering, mentally ill people who benefit from treatment. And the reason that I felt that Philip needed to come into hospital was not because he was causing any uh, disruption to anybody else, but because he was very ill and needed treatment. Hello. Hi. Sorry, do you remember me? Yes, I do remember you. Uh, yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. We um, yeah. How do we I understand go? you sent you sent, yeah, you sent for me. Yep. Yeah. Should we go and talk? Um, yeah, I wanted to talk to say. Yeah, speak they can here. come with us too. Um, okay, let's go. We'll find you. Professor Tom Burns had seen from John's medical notes that he'd previously improved on medication, but John believes that the drugs harmed him. I think the social worker came to you this morning uh -huh. and explained the situation. Yeah. Uh -huh. That uh, I'd come to see you, uh -huh. and then Dr. Clark had come to see you, and we'd talk with your GP, Dr. Blomstein, and we all felt that you weren't well. For what reason? Well, we felt that the, the ideas that had been preoccupying you for some time... Like what? Well, a number of things. Mm -hmm. The worries about your skin changing colour, uh -huh. and uh, about what happened to your twin sister, yeah, uh -huh. and um, some things about you know your origins and things yeah, like uh -huh. that. When we talked with with your doctor, it, it, it didn't appear that those were probably the case. Hello, you spoke with my doctor. Yeah. Yes. Dr. And I did. I did. I did speak to you with your other colleague who came. Yeah. I told you that. 
this doctor is in a league with my mom. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, you are a doctor. Yeah. Can you tell me under any aspect of medicine? Yeah, that it is impossible for a man's skin to be genetically or uh, medical whatever changed. Can you tell me? That it, it doesn't happen. Can you, no, can you tell me that it is absolutely impossible? Well, I mean, it's always risky to say that anything is impossible, but it's very unlikely. Yeah, okay. But I'm, I want you to know that you're speaking to somebody who was born white, yes? And I told you that if you wanted to follow up with anything, you want to, you would vote, it's good for you to verify. Yeah, and listen, listen, I, I'm not coming here, okay, to be given drugs that I don't need, yeah, to be injected on my private part secretly and it be kept out of the files. You, I came out of here, out of this, this hospital, hardly able to brush my teeth, hardly able to eat, hardly able to stand, yeah? I, 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 I found myself wounding on myself, doing on myself. I, could, I, I, was more, I was less than a baby. Yes? Okay. Now, what sort of medicine is that? Okay. Why should you go inside? The... Listen, listen. You, you, oh, hold on. Yeah. You keep me here by force. Yeah? You keep me here by force and drag me so much so that I can't even get out of the hospital That's on my own. Listen, listen, do. listen, listen. Yeah? And now, and now I come out of the hospital on, in your time and I'm hardly able to brush my teeth or eat or do anything. What sort of, what is, what sort of um, uh, medical practitioner is that? Can I, I can you answer understand? a lot of those questions if you give me a few minutes. Can you? Let, let me take it one by one, okay? You've been admitted under Section 2. You understand what that means, the social worker explained. It is that you, it's a compulsory order, and it means you have to stay in the hospital. How many times do you take somebody under compulsory order for which once you were not able to do anything good, but you end, you end up nearly killing the person? Hang on. Let, let, I'm going to answer those questions, but you've got to give me time to go through it, okay? Do answer Hang my on. questions, that's what I want. I'm doing that, right. Now, it's up to four weeks. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. Listen, Mr. Benz or Dr. Benz or whatever, whatever professor you've got there, listen. If I come under your treatment, yeah. am I supposed to, as a doctor, or as a hospital, yeah. Yeah, am I supposed to leave better or worse? Right. Can I answer all your ask, questions? Ask me. Right. Do you want me to start with that one? Yeah, yeah. I hope you leave much better, right? No, wait, wait, wait. No, no, it's not I hope. I'm talking about what you did in the past. I yes? don't know about the past. You don't know. Listen, listen, listen. You don't know about the past, yes? You don't know about the past. Yes, but that is what your folks did. Okay. okay? Can I answer? No, uh, just answer me. Am I supposed to um, mm -hmm. leave here better or worse? You're supposed to leave here better. And why do I go back not able to brush my teeth? Well, I'm sorry if that's how it was then. But the first thing we'll do is we'll look very carefully into what's happened in the past and we'll discuss it more with you. And what, what have I been doing that makes you think I'm schizophrenic partner? Right. Well, first of all, I haven't said you are. I need time to get to know you to find out what I think. That's what you're in hospital for. If somebody has said that in the past, what they mean is that you're somebody who, under stress, has withdrawn into yourself, become preoccupied, excessively preoccupied, with fears and worries about what people outside are doing to you. My, my judgment, Philip, I'll be frank, was that when I spoke with you, that you, the stories that you told me, I thought were, in large part, your imagination getting the better of you. Now, I know you don't agree with what, me. What is that well, imagine, what, what aspect on. of my imagination? What's your proof? Well, I haven't got proof, but it's my judgment, right? It's your judgment. What's, what's it, judgment without proof? Well, you're, you're right in a way there, and that's what I'm afraid the law allows us to use Section 2 for, is, is to spend longer getting more information to see whether... How do you get, that, yes, how do you get that, those information? The only way I make that diagnosis is on people's thoughts and feelings. Whose who's, who's thoughts and feelings? The person I'm talking to. What's my thoughts and feelings? What well, can you make for me? I haven't made the diagnosis, by the way. You, you keep using it. I haven't used it yet. What's it? Right. But I might come to that decision. But let's No, no, talk no, no. About Could you present. tell me what... You don't just take somebody and say, I have no whatever of him and that and... What is, what is it? I believe your ideas about the cannibalism, about your skin changing colour... Which you, under your medical knowledge, or professor's on. medical Hang knowledge, on. is impossible. Yeah. And the thing about your relationship with the Queen... I think you're not based why on Why didn't you ask? Why, why didn't you find out? Can I, listen, can I, listen, listen, listen. Philip, we're not going to get very far. Don't you've call me Philip, me. please. No, right, Mr. Adu. You, you've told don't me. call me Mr. Adu. What do you want to be My called? name is John. John, John. Baptist. Okay. Can I... Because I think we're going to go round and round. You've told me these things, and I know that you feel... I hope you things. know that you've already implicated yourself. Yes. Where is your proof that I'm suffering from delusions? I have a, I have a flat. You came there. I wasn't, I wasn't 
out in smoking uh, uh, pot no, or doing no, any no, kind of things some of you some no. of you doctors do here no, yeah listen anymore. listen listen I, I wasn't doing any of those things yeah you came there I was I was I was doing what I was supposed to do as a citizen if anything will you stay here while we explore it listen under the right legal system listen under the right Let legal me... listen, listen under the right legal system you have no right to keep me here well, in fact, and I don't I think do. I will stay in which case, All right? you'll probably have to go to a locked ward. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. I'm trying to say to you... Listen to me. I've had people try to do away with me. I'm not yeah? trying to do it. What you should do as a conscientious doctor is to spend time and find out and stop saying that I, I'm having delusions. They serve a sorbet as a sort of refresher to the palace between courses. But I think they better like that as a pudding. And we look gorgeous in long, spare glasses. And Most of the patients on U Ward can come and go as they please. Many are there of their own free will. But those who are thought likely to harm themselves or to run away while sectioned have to be escorted by a nurse. Schizophrenia is a complex disorder which is characterized by uh, a range of symptoms, not all of which are present in, any, in every patient. And they're usually strange, bizarre beliefs, which we call delusions. Strange experiences called hallucinations, You're usually hearing voices talking about you. He's never talked about hearing voices, and he's never given evidence of what's called a thought disorder. But I've no doubt that this is a schizophrenic illness. Yeah, yeah. For John, there may be a legal way out. He can appeal to a Mental Health Act tribunal to have his section lifted. Two hours after arriving at Springfield, he's on his way to the hospital's law centre to see solicitor Robert Denton. When did you actually come into hospital on this occasion? Oh, uh, just this, uh, was it, what time was it? Um, about two hours ago. About two hours ago, they just brought me here. So you come in today. And um, did you come in uh, with the social worker or did the police bring you in or? They came here with the, I came with the social workers and the, uh, and the police. Before the tribunal, John will be assessed by a registered independent psychiatrist. He fears he won't be judged properly if he's heavily medicated. Is it no right to wait until that examination is done and then to say you have the right to give somebody uh, some drugs or, or injections? That decision, the law says, rests okay, wait, wait, wait. With, with your consultant. Wait, how do I know if I'm no, going to be no, up my senses no, 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 for, no. for an independent psychiatrist to come and do an examination of me and say this guy is okay in his mind when, you've already, when I've already been drugged? You're quite so, right that medication does sometimes place people at a disadvantage. And because, in this particular case, but, but, I, 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 the same thing has happened before. But yeah, whether that's right or whether that's wrong, there's nothing I can do about it because the decision rests with your consultant and not with me. Five days later, John is still refusing medication. He says he shouldn't be a patient and won't even eat the food provided. John is in the care of U-Ward nursing staff and the community mental health team who meet every Monday for Professor Burns' ward round. As the patients aren't bedridden, this takes place in the lounge. John refuses to attend. Since coming in, my understanding is he's kept himself to himself. He's been polite, well-behaved. Both times I've spoken to him, he's still totally preoccupied with his delusions, does not want any form of treatment, um, and is hoping to prove us wrong in the tribunal and whichever way possible. I gather he's not... I've written him up for oral medicine. Has he taken any? He has had nothing at all. Well, and there's been no progress, really. So I, th I think we ought to, as part of his examination, he ought to have um, a trial of medication. I agree. If we don't do that, we're going to be sitting here for four weeks. Because he won't get off in his, his tribunal. He's clearly very ill. And uh, we'll be getting... We'll be withdrawing his liberty without getting anywhere unless we give him some medicine. My feeling is we should put to him today that we want him to take medicine. And if he says no, I don't think there's any point that we should ensure that he's injected this afternoon. So it's about, uh, totally clear, you, you want him to have an IM injection today, yeah. regardless of agitation, yeah. just so that we, it's done. Mm -hmm. right. Okay? Yeah, that's absolutely clear. 
Because yeah. otherwise we were sitting here twiddling our thumbs for days and weeks. Right, who's number three? If we're going to forcibly inject somebody, we'll give him a drug which actually works for a day or two so that uh, he gets the benefit of a couple of days medication which, so that we don't have to sort of force him every six or eight hours. The second thing is I routinely give uh, a benzodiazepine injection at the same time so he gets two drugs at the same time. And one of the benefits of the benzodiazepines is, A, it's rather calming, but also it generates a little bit of retrograde amnesia. So often the patient doesn't remember the rather undignified tussle that's involved in giving him an injection. Yeah, there's quite a lot. And, um, John had been examined by the independent psychiatrist the day after he was admitted. He's just received a copy of the report that will be put forward at his tribunal. It recommends a different approach to that of Professor Burns. And... Um, but I didn't understand quite a lot of what I said. Um, in my opinion, the imposition of false medication should be a last resort to be undertaken only if there is immediate danger to himself or other people as a result of his illness, or if there is a likelihood that his own mental health would be appreciably improved as a result. In my opinion, balancing pros and cons, the overall consequences of false medication at this point of time would be detrimental on the and the whole to his mental health. Therefore, unless there is a serious concern that he may be a danger to others or that his safety is in peril, Mr. Addo or Mr. Baptist should be discharged. Signed, Sumanje M. Fernando, consultant psychiatrist. It's quite unfair by John to force medication. The disadvantages are quite uh, immense like uh, it will undermine any possibility of uh, his developing any trusting relationship with, uh, with a professional in the future. It would um, give him a lot of side effects, which would uh, make his mental health worse. Uh, it'll, um, it'll destroy his self-confidence, or it will undermine his self-confidence, um, and so on the whole, that it would be detrimental. That night, John showed the report to the nurses on U Ward, and they did not forcibly inject him. Eight days after his admission to U Ward, the Mental Health Review Tribunal are to hear John's case. Three commissioners will judge the conflicting opinions of Professor Tom Burns and Dr. Suman Fernando a consultant psychiatrist with expertise in treating patients from ethnic minorities. These are not exotic, uh, you know, things that come from uh, outer space. It's, it's actually from people's lives and histories and, uh, and psychologies. You know, I was uh, living in a colonial country and uh, most m my, my formative years, and uh, I will remember, for instance, uh, my father saying that when there was a when there was a lot of protests about uh, the go local governor, there were petitions to the queen. The queen was like sort of the god that you appealed to above all this, above all this racism and above all the, the race uh, things. Uh, it's a, it's very unfortunate. I think when these ideas are held so strongly and they become delusions, and we call them delusions, and it goes into the medical arena, we lose the basis of it. And we just treat the delusion as if it's any old delusion. And uh, that's what I call the narrow medical approach. The Mental Health Act commissioners hear from a social worker as well as from the consultant. The hearing is private and confidential. John will be represented by Robert Denton, the hospital law center's solicitor. I'm not allowed to talk about what's gone on there, um, and nor is Louise. I think that uh, I have, I'm, I'm sure they will uh, uphold his detention and we will start to treat him and hopefully he'll start to get better. If he gets into trouble with 
neighbors or if he starts pestering people or you know he climbs into Buckingham Palace or something then then I suppose rightly then one would have to there would be a need to uh, to um, even use forcible medication yes you know then the cons you know the, it's about pros and cons but, but at the moment there isn't anything like that there's nothing like that everyone agreed at the tribunal and uh, Tom Burns was you know very clear there was no question of uh, danger to anyone else or to himself. It's about health. And, um, and he's worried about his health. Well, uh, it's nice for him to be worried about his health, but uh, about John's health. Uh, but uh, I think he's going to be fine. <laughs> no. What do you think the result's going to be? No. How would I put it? If rightly judged, I shouldn't be here. The tribunal ruled that John had to stay on section two. I am not staying on the word, and I'm not. I'm, I'm not. Um, I'm not having any management tribunal. If they won't allow me to go home and come for a tribunal, I don't want to stay here at all. Okay. I'm going back to the office, and I'm going to wait for the clerk to bring through the written decision. Okay. Now I'll bring a copy of that up to you on the ward if you're up there. Okay. I don't. I'm, I won't be there. But you can continue to do what you're doing. Okay, you well, I'm going to wait for my time. Okay. All right, so that's it. And um, they said they wanted me to stay on the, the hospital section. And uh, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to stay on the other section. I'm not going to remain here. They wouldn't let me go home to come for the management tribunal, which I requested. I don't want to stay on word and be and, uh, anymore. I'm going, I'm going, I'm just going to leave. And um, if they tend to put me in, me in log bat, not log bat, I'm going to have the, I'm going to have them also executed in the end. But John, John, if you go home, or if you, if you leave, you know they're going to send the police to find you. I wouldn't mind risking that. I'm not going to have anybody give me checking to my private part anymore. They don't, they've not agreed to be rational or reasonable. And in the end, they are going to lose their lives. Because you don't do that legally. Once I said I would be at home and come here from my management tribunal, they didn't listen. They've not consulted with the Queen. I won't be here anymore. If they bring a police, police after me, they're only going to let the Queen know that I'm here. And I'm not going to stay here anymore. Simple as that. Thank you. Whiskey, whiskey, eight four. Eight four, eight four, go ahead. Yeah, whiskey, whiskey, from eight four. Read this missing person from Springfield. The chap is a Philip Adu. Unfortunately, we've got no date of birth here, but he's five foot nine, IC three. Uh, been missing apparently since seven pm. If anybody sees him, comes across him. Yeah, you were a son of R four with a, a lot of interference. Under normal yeah, so circumstances, to, uh, the ward should have been phoned as soon as the tribunal was over. A nurse would have gone to escort John back to wait for the written verdict to be delivered by hand. But this didn't happen, and the next morning, staff are still officially unaware of the result. Right. Because we do have a letter for Philip, but we don't have a letter ourselves. I mean, it's, it's obviously marked. Mental, mental Health uh, Review Tribunal decision. OK, thanks, Jenny. Bye. Basically, we're going to treat until we know officially that Sid it's an abscond. So I'll be contacting the police and asking them to chase things up. John? 
John, hello? Green and white soapy top. You in there, John? Really, we would like to refer it to the social services, to be honest, because we don't, he, he doesn't know, is the social services are actually dealing with it. It's unfair as to force entry because we don't know what the situation is in the, with him, really, so I wouldn't like to force my way in there without the social services being present because they obviously, they know what he is like and how to deal with him. So I've never met the character before, so I'd really like to uh, leave it down to social services. As it was already late on a Friday afternoon, social services didn't pick up the case until Monday morning. In fact, John had left his house and was sleeping rough in Epping Forest. Ten days later, the police found John at home and took him back to Springfield Hospital. He was kept for a week on the secure ward, along with acutely disturbed patients who are often violent and distressed. All the furniture is fixed to the floor, and the windows are unbreakable. The reason that psychiatrists do this is because over the years our experience teaches us that more people than not welcome uh, our, our intervention in this way and feel, when they have got better, that they're, they're, they're pleased about it. Of course, they tend to be rather quiet about it, and you don't get a lot of noise from people who have been compulsorily treated and feel that it was right and they've got better because, on the whole, they want to forget that and get on with their lives. But, uh, I mean, if I think of all the people that I compulsorily treat, I mean, 85% of them I have a decent relationship with afterwards. They don't all hate me. 15% hate me. John agreed to take medication because he realised that if he didn't, he would be forced to. He was given antipsychotic drugs and allowed to go back to U ward. Right, your blood pressure's fine. I want you to see now, it's with this index finger. Almost every psychiatric patient is on some form of medication. Yet even today, doctors don't know exactly how these drugs work. My finger will start moving. Over the years, many theories have been put forward. The present theory about antipsychotic drugs is that they work on the transmitters, the chemicals that take messages between the nerve cells in the brain, and that they probably work on things that are called the uh, dopamine receptors which are part of the nerve cells of the brain. Uh, and that somehow or other they, they block or alter the transmission of these messages. And that leads to a sort of uh, a calming of the patient, which isn't just a sedation, not just a sort of making you tired. It somehow calms that process down in the brain. Yep. Mm -hmm. Spot too much there. The drugs have many side effects which have been well documented. One of them is the pacing up and down so commonly seen in psychiatric hospitals. Patients are given other drugs to counter the side effects. John was particularly reluctant to take medication because he'd been badly affected in the past. Patients vary very much in how sensitive they are to side effects. Certainly patients in the ethnic minority seem to be very sensitive to these drugs. Everybody seems to play. It's going to be cut with the air. And that's been happening once in a while. Yeah, that's one of the side effects. And then sometimes you feel your body twisting. You, I mean, twisting painfully, as though somebody were pressing you, pushing you against yourself. OK, there you go. You can get strange contractures of the muscles that come very suddenly and are very frightening, but are easily treated with side effect tablets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As treatment goes on, the main problems are either a stiffness and a sluggishness, which patients find as if their limbs are heavy, they walk slowly, often with a shuffling gait, a bit like people with Parkinson's disease. More distressing, however, is a thing called akathisia, which is a restlessness, where the patient feels that their legs, or sometimes their arms, sometimes even their abdomen, is restless. And often they can't keep still, they sort of jump from foot to foot, and that's very distressing. You've been walking and your feet feel very tired, but you can't stop. So you, uh, you try lying down, you just find yourself getting up again. 
You can see me walking up and down. You might think I plan to plan to do that. I haven't planned to do that. And I much rather would be sitting down reading something. But you can't do that either. The antipsychotic effect of the drugs takes several weeks to work. But they act as powerful sedatives almost immediately. Hello, Mr. Radu. John is still refusing to attend ward rounds, so he's sought out by Dr. Francis Raphael, the team's senior registrar. Hello. Um, can I come in just for two seconds? Um, I'm Dr. Raphael. We've met before a good few weeks ago, but I haven't really had a chance to speak to you or find out how things are for you. And I wondered whether you'd feel like coming having a quick chat, just to... I'm not feeling OK at the moment. You're not feeling OK? Um, is there anything I can help you with about that? They're not feeling well. No, no. Do you know what it is that's making you not feel well? No. No, I just spoke to Dr. Rob. You've got to? I just spoke to Dr. Rob. Right. Oh, you just spoke to Dr. Rob. Right. Okay, well, good. Um, well, I won't, I won't push it now, but it, it just, you know, I am around and we can talk sometime. And perhaps I'll come back another time when you're feeling not quite so, when you're, when you're feeling a bit better. And we'll, we'll try and have a talk then. Okay? That's okay. John was first taken to Springfield under Section 2 of the Mental Health Act, which gave doctors a month to assess him. He's now on Section 3 which means he can be compulsorily treated for up to six months. Under each section, he has the right of appeal, not only to the Mental Health Act commissioners, but also to Springfield's hospital managers. At the hospital manager's review board, three lay people will decide whether he should be released. Dr. Enid Vincent and John Dolphin, a JP, are both former health authority chairs. Anthony Wellington is an actor with an interest in mental health. All three volunteered to be managers. They will hear from a nurse on U Ward, from a social worker, and from John's consultant, represented today by Dr. Raphael. For this hearing, John has changed his solicitor. If he is now ready and willing to take the treatment as it appears, is, why will that not still be the case once he's gone back home? Um, John stated quite clearly to me that he doesn't want treatment. Um, I think the improvement in the acceptance of medication at the moment is still fairly fragile, and yes. I'm, I'm not confident that that is secure enough to say that they would continue once he was at home. He lived on his own for two years, didn't he? Um, yes and has, to a certain extent, looked after himself and kept himself um, physically safe. But I don't think his mental state has been sufficiently well to say that that has, uh, is sufficient. Professor Byrne said, he is not a nuisance to his neighbours and clearly looks after himself. Now, this is referring to that period. Yes. Um, can't, I can't dispute that, but I think there's more to well-being and good health than simple physical safety in terms of feeding and clothing and washing. Yes, but he's, not, he's not, certainly not a danger to himself when he's on his own. He's, he's not likely to, to hurt himself, is he? Um, I've got no evidence of that and I'm not questioning that. I simply don't think that is well-being and good health. I think the evidence is that John has been better, his mental state has been better and treatment would help him regain that. It is usual, isn't it, when someone is sectioned, that they have done something specific which causes grounds for concern? Self-neglect or not necessarily physical self-neglect, but neglect of mental state can be sufficient to, to warrant sectioning or can, can raise people's concerns. And it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be a dramatic incident. He presents himself as a fairly calm and reasonable and rational sort of person. When you speak to him, he's very quiet spoken. Um, that's the position now. It hasn't been the position f um, until very recently. And I think without treatment, there's a risk that he would deteriorate into a more agitated and distressed state. 
What forms exactly does this agitation take then? Um, being angry, irritable, labile, um, shouting at people, um, verbally aggressive, never acting, never physically threatening anyone. Mm -hmm. Does he, for example, does he use bad language? I've not heard him use bad language. So the problem then just reverts round these ostensibly rather strange beliefs he has about his identity and the, the things that you described earlier on. Yes, I don't think it can be. I don't think it can be seen as acceptable to continue believing to be this, that he's descended from royal family, that his sister has been cannibalised, that his skin has been turned white, that his skin, that his hair is, is now growing blue. I, I don't consider that to be enough grounds to leave John and say that he's looking after himself well enough. I mean, for instance, he doesn't pretend to be Hitler or Genghis Khan or Jack the Ripper or anything like that, which certainly would cause very great concern. It would cause great concern. Uh, it, I think it would be inappropriate to be judgmental about the, na the severity or the nature of, of delusional ideas, the fact is they're present, they're interfering with John's well-being, and that's what I'm most concerned with. They are inappropriate beliefs mm -hmm. for John to hold. Mm -hmm. okay. I just want to um, push you a little bit further on the matter of drugs, if I may. Um, you were saying that the do you, the doctors say that the drugs are doing you good, that you are improving. You say you think the drugs are harming you, they are upsetting you in a variety of ways. Why will you go on taking the drugs if you don't think they do you any good? Um, it's one thing to be taking some drugs in detention. Yes. It's another thing to be taking them on your own at home. Uh -huh. I much rather really prefer being at home if I'm taking in something because nobody seems to be believing that they do me harm. Mm. So the only thing to do is to take them at home where in a better environment. Mm. And do you think they might do you more good if you were taking them in that different environment? Personally, I wouldn't want to take them. Mm. But just, uh, just because they're insisting. <coughs> just because they're insisting. Yes. That's why I said I would take it at home with them, with them around. Yes. Um, do you believe that you're in? No. But how do you see yourself now? Do you see yourself as a, as a white man or do you see yourself as a black man? Well, having been born white, I would much rather consider myself like I was born. Uh, you know that your mother has no, denies any knowledge of any of this. Huh? I know she would deny it. I know she would deny it. Because my grandparents got to know about what happened to my sister. And um, they didn't want the queen getting on to know what happened to her what was done to her because it would involve their being uh, prosecuted. And these beliefs that you have, you don't see them as being anything to do with this apparent illness that you no, have? No, no. No. consider this matter very carefully. We have to tell you that it's our belief that you should still stay in hospital for a while and continue with the treatment. We believe you need that treatment and we're not altogether certain if we released you that you would continue that treatment. Uh, we only hope that it won't be for very long. And it is very early days. You've only had your second depot injection and that hasn't really taken full effect. Um, we can't say how long this will be, um, but uh, we're sorry that we're not able to release you, but that, that is the decision. All right? Okay? So, you have to go back to the ward now. All right? 
you understand. And we appreciate you're very disappointed, but we believe this is for your own good. So would you like to go back now? Okay, John. Yes, there's a piece of paper there which confirms that. Have a seat. Oh. Have this one. It's more comfortable than that's. Oh, good. Do you think, I mean, looking back on it, that anything anything's changed in your time here in hospital? No, not much. Mm. I mean, you said to me, what, ten days ago, that your worry that we were going to harm you has gone away. Yeah, because nobody, nobody put me to sleep. Yeah. So to some extent, I suppose that's one change, not, not a big change, but it's a change that you know that we're not trying to kill you or... But the other worry, worry is that people don't take your, your claims seriously. That's still a worry, is it? I just keep them to myself. Keep them just off. Well, I think that's not a bad idea sometimes. All right. OK. What do you want to do? If we continue to reduce the medicine, do you want to be at home? Pardon? If we continue to reduce the medicine, do you want to be at home or do you still not feel well? I want to be at home. You want to be at home. OK. All right. But do you understand that you have to have contact with us at least twice a week? Yeah. Otherwise, I'd have to bring you back. Does that yeah. include... My contact. Yes. Yeah. Caroline Ridley, an intensive outreach worker, will be responsible for John's welfare. Well, he is a bit slowed up, mm. but um, he's also, I think, quite miserable. Mm. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's been he's been hit in a bit. be nice to be optimistic and think that this keeping it to himself is, a, is the dawning of some vague insight, but it may just be his learning it causes less trouble. I think he is sadder, and I think actually that's improvement. I think that's because he's more of a whole person, frankly. I think his illness locked him off from a lot of that. <clears throat> but I, mean, I don't deny that it's distressing. I don't agree that he's unable to stand on his own two feet any, any less than he was when we admitted him, because despite appearances that he was functioning well, when we explored things when he was in inpatient, it became quickly, transparently clear that he was not actually functioning. His life was a total shambles. Had we not got involved when we got involved, he'd probably been evicted, etc., etc. He had masses of debts, doing all sorts of things in a very chaotic way. Back at home, John feels unable to cope with the most basic tasks. To make sure he gets his medication, he's now given a depot injection once a fortnight so that the drug is gradually released into his body. The North Battersea team are trying out the use of intensive outreach workers. They have a small caseload and are expected to support every aspect of a patient's life back in the community. My primary thing is to get a relationship going with him, but I'm not prepared to compromise the fact that I think he's got a mental illness. Hi, how are you? Can I come in? If I can engage him by showing him I can help him sort out some of the things that are important to him, money is important to him. At the minute, side effects are extremely important to him. His privacy and his self-respect are important to him, and I don't think me believing he has a mental illness has to compromise those things. I think we can work together on those. I find that I can't even do the little things I could do before. Mm. Is your mouth pretty stiff as well? Yeah. Can you move your jaw like that? Does it feel very tight? Yeah. Can you move your head around? Is that as loose as it gets? Yeah. Mm. Put your hand out. Rest it loose. Make it go floppy. Can you make it go floppy? Can you let your hand flop in mine? Yeah. Yeah? I'm finding difficult to do the cooking. Yeah. 
because your hands are shaking. My hands are shaking. Yeah. He's fairly sort of helpless, and, and I think he wants someone to look after him. And it would suit him probably 100% if I could do that, but I can't do it as often as he obviously wants it. Um, so I think a, bit, a big bit of him does want to go back to the world. I think, I think he'd be reluctant to say it, but I think he misses having a few people about. Would you take a couple of recycling or one? I don't like taking them. Well, I know you don't. They're not the same ones as the Stelazine. They, they're actually to help the side effects, and you're really suffering with the side effects a bit at the moment. Mouth is shaking away. Mm -hmm. I really feel for you. Would you take one now? I'm trying to help it. I can't help it any other way at the minute. I can only help it with that. And it might help it settle down a bit. It's tough. Shall I get them for you? Okay. Yeah. I don't doubt that the intensity of these feelings would be reduced. And in medical terms, he would be seen to improve. Uh, strictly medical terms, I mean the narrow medical terms. And um, he'd then have to take his medication. Each time he, if he stops, he'll relapse. And uh, he'd be given medication again. And gradually, he'll become a chronic patient. Uh, he'll be um, sort of zombie-like from time to time. Uh, he'll lose his uh, enthusiasm about life. In the past, he would have been institutionalized in hospital. Now he'd be institutionalized in the community, perhaps going to a day center and um, stitching uh, things together or something like that. And he'll be success. You can get a bus pass if you are either mentally or physically disabled in some way. Now, most of the clients I work with, because we feel they have a mental illness, they are entitled to a bus pass. But you would have to sign something to say that, that you, you feel you are suffering from mental illness. And I know the other week when we talked about it, you weren't happy to do that. So. I mean, I believe you're suffering from a mental illness. You can get me a bus pass. Would that be right? Yeah. You can get me a bus pass. OK. That's the bit where it says my disability is. Now, my feeling, and I know you disagree with it, is that you do have a mental illness that causes you some problems. And certainly at the moment, the, the treatment for what we feel to be your mental illness is causing you great problems because it's causing you a lot of shakes and difficulty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It says that I'm permanently and substantially disabled, which is a very heavy thing to say. Now, I think at the minute you are suffering from mental illness and that therefore you are disabled, not least you're having problems with the treatment you're getting for it. Mm, it's OK, it's OK. It's difficult, isn't it? Yeah. Would you like to sign it and me not send it off until you're ready to? I won't send it until you want me to send it. Yeah, I don't want you to send it off, it's all right. Okay, I won't send it off. But what we could do, Philip, is that if I kept it, I won't send it anywhere at all. It'd just be between you and me. Then if one day we were out together and we got some passport photos, we would be ready to send it at any time you wanted to send it. We wouldn't have to wait around and go through it. It's up to you, Philip. Four months after he was sectioned, John's mental state has changed considerably. He now attends the team's community base in Edward Wilson House for his consultations with Professor Burns. Well, do you know when the section finishes? January. Have you put a sort of date on your calendar, yeah. counting off the days? Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. One of the things that we talked about on the phone was um, 
whether some of these ideas that you and I disagreed a bit about, how you thought about them, and in particular the thing about the circumstances of your birth. Do you remember that? We talked on the phone? Yeah. Tell me, what, what do you make of that now? Well, in the beginning, I would have corrected it, but for, the, for my being detained, the hospital caught up most of what I was thinking about, so I didn't realise that in time. But um, what, what my brand parents were saying was that I had a white descendant, not that I, I was born white. So you feel now that you, you weren't born white, but that sometime in the past there's been somebody white in your ancestors. Yes, yes. And you also talked something about blue eyes. That was, and that hair. Was, they, were, they were trying to describe the person with red hair, but I've got it muddled up. Right. I've got it muddled up. So you think it was a bit of a muddle? Now? Yeah. yeah. So you feel that when you were born, you did have black hair and yeah. black skin, yeah. yeah. So in many ways, it sounds like things are an awful lot better. Or do you not see them as a lot better? Yeah. Not for sure. Because, I mean, you were first you were quite scared that we were going to try and hurt you or kill you, do you remember? Yeah. You looked very scared when you came into hospital. You know that I think the medicine's very important in this. No, I don't think so. Mm. How would you feel if we reduced the medicine? Do you think if we reduced it, you could try and take it for a bit longer? Or do you still intend to stop it the minute your section finishes? Yes. You're going to stop it the minute you can? Yeah. I mean, that's a pity, really, because I think you're so much better. I think the most important determinant of how well he does, I'm afraid, is going to be whether he recognises he's ill. Because what he's already shown us is that he gets better on the medicines. He's not cured, and nobody's pretending he's cured. But uh, he's clearly a lot better than when he came in. He's not aroused, hostile and angry. And I don't think that's just the circumstances of him being brought in. That's because of his illness and what it was doing to him. I think his delusions are crumbling now. He's a proud man. He's not going to admit it point blank. But I think he genuinely is beginning to, to think, well, that was all a bit of a mistake. I mean, what have you. So that's good news. What's bad news, I think, is he's going to stop the medicine the day the section finishes. And the problem is, um, I think sadly, but some people would disagree, but that the law doesn't allow us to continue with his medicine for about a year or so. Because I think a year or so from now, um, he would have got his life back on track. Would you be prepared to see me again after the section finished, or am I completely out of your life then? I'm be out. I'm out. Into outer darkness. <laughs> What about Caroline? Because she's helping with lots of other things. It's OK. It's yeah. OK. Yeah. Can we have that in writing? Or <laughs> on camera or something? Uh, you know, I didn't speak to you at all, wouldn't you? <laughs> you know, I disappeared. Anything else we've got to go through? No. So we'll, I'll reduce this and uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Good. Thank you. I'll just struggle in here.